Sydafrika. Vad producerar man för vin inom landet? Bör Sydafrika verkligen kallas nya världen? Och hur ser den gastronomiska kulturen ut? Jag heter Daniela Lund Egenäs och är sommelier. Detta är några saker jag hoppas kunna besvara i den här serien om Sydafrika som vinland. Jag har också tagit hjälp av vår svenska master of wine, Madeleine Stenovret. Det hon inte kan svara på när det kommer till sydafrikanskt vin, det är knappast värt att veta. Tillsammans besöker vi några producenter för att lyfta blicken mot ett land som vi båda älskar. Häng på! Jag befinner mig just nu i Sydafrika i staden Pärl och idag så besöker jag Nederburg, en vinproducent som nästan är som en vininstitution här i Sydafrika. Lång historia som även har en härlig historia när det kommer till Sverige. Jag har med mig Madeleine Stenret, vår master of wine också, som gör en provning tillsammans med deras vd och vinmakare Nil. Ja, häng på! Nederberg grundades 1791 av den tyska emigranten Philip Wolfert som började producera vin i liten skala. Det mer moderna Nederberg såg ljuset 1937 när gården köptes av en annan tysk vid namn Johan George Graue. Det var Graue som tillsammans med sonen Arnold som introducerade temperaturkontrollerad jäsning i Sydafrika. Efter Arnolds död i en flygolycka 1953 anställdes Günther Bråsel som ny vinmakare på gården. Han är mest känd för att ha introducerat söta botrytisviner i Sydafrika. Bråsels kända dessertviner är allt jämt måttstocken efter vilka landets alla dessertviner jämförs. In 2018-2019 when I started just looking after Niederberg Pongras, the approach that we've got here, I mean we had to 142 different wines um, that resulted in just over 500 skews so different pack sizes different back labels different it's cotton then it's six packs then it's 12 packs I mean it's just a logistic nightmare so currently we are on 96 so we've done a bit of culling already but the vision for the next three years is to go from 96 to 24 so this is Cabernet Sauvignon. This is basically the engine room of the Niederberg brand. So this is called the Wine Masters Cabernet. And you'll see we've we've made some subtle changes to the, to the packaging, making sure that the label actually and the the um, uh, the crest starts giving us more meaning. So it's got to do with um, uh, exploration. It's got to do with the flame. is is about um, exploring the the ropes are about unity. Um, a vision is, is also built in there. We've got the cork trees that was quite unique in in those days. I mean, they tried to actually produce their own cork in South Africa. So there's a number of cork trees still planted on the property. Mm. So obviously the cork was too, too porous and to, couldn't be used. They actually got a, a cork harvester from Portugal and apparently it was one hell of a party. But yeah, no corks were really made for, for production. <laughs> So in this case we're going for accessibility um, with this wine. It's it's sourced quite wide. So we've got vineyards in Philadelphia, we've got vineyards in Darling, we've got vineyards in Stellenbosch, mm. um, a little bit of vineyards in Paul, but yeah, predominantly Philadelphia and Stellenbosch would be where this this blend gets made up from. Mm. Those vineyards you mentioned, Philadelphia, Durbanville, Stellenbosch, they're all very influenced by the ocean. Yeah. So you have coolness and you have the 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 aspects and you have the aspects that you are able to get those uh, winds coming in and also keeping the yields a little bit lower because of that wind and cooling influence and then you get more fragrance and maybe you don't want to extract so much because the style of the fruit is maybe a little more as you say approachable but also a little bit more red fruited and fragrant yeah and that's that brings drinkability to cabernet that Usually most people think of Cabernet as something big and strong and mm. tannic and therefore they don't go for it. Yeah. 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 
me choosing those sites together with our viticulturists and winemakers gives us the opportunity of hanging time because you've got the cooling effect of the ocean. So now you've got the manor house mm -hmm. cab. So here you go to a tenth of the production. Over here you're looking at just over a million litres. And on this side you're, you're looking about 150,000 litres. Here we also go smaller in area. So this is uh, Philadelphia. So the area it's called Philadelphia and Darling, where we're getting this fruit from. Um, uh, Darling, not where you grow the Sauvignon Blanc, so not on the hills, but actually on the Swatland side um, of, of Darling. So if one of our farms called Pupcase Fontaine, I think you might have been there in the past. So we, we get some Cabernet, more of the darker fruit. So where this to me is, is red fruit, this would become more blue and then mm -hmm. we'll go to black. So now I think with this Cabernet we're reaching a level where I really take my hat off and I say wow this is Cabernet the way you want to have it if you're a little bit more I wouldn't say educated but if you have a little bit more like wine experience of wanting to have wines that give you richness um, structure seriousness but still uh, wanting to have that drinkability so this this is a very clever wine this is Cabernet when it's going darker and um, it just has a pride in being um, Cabernet <coughs> Okay, so we move to two centuries. Um, Niederberg has, has quite a rich history when it comes to the Niederberg auction. Mm. And the Niederberg auction has, has moved more towards an industry affair. It's, it's not just an auction that's held by Niederberg and sponsored mm. by Niederberg anymore. <coughs> so, but the... It has changed the name. Yes, yeah. um, uh, the name is now the Cape Fine and Rare mm. Auction. So, what happened... Um, uh, is that there's always been a brand called Private Bin, mm. at th and it was specifically for the auction. So, and with us not using it in the auction anymore, I've now brought it in to the top tier of Niederberg. So yeah. we've got three Private Bin wines. We've got Private Bin Two Centuries. So Two Centuries got quite a track record for Cabernet at the top end, but it's sourced from various sites. So it's something that you'll find every year. Mm. Um, uh, most probably and then you've got private bin R163 which was an auction wine mm. but from just Paul so there's a site in Paul that and yeah. depending on the vintage will release a wine or not so with this private bin two centuries this is like really at the absolute top and I think this one really really shows that Cabernet is an absolute rock star from from this region and this area and Niederberg, hats off again, this, this is good, this is really good. So with Heritage Heroes, it's a packaging change, it's mm. also a positioning change. So what, what we found is that um, I want to be, after COVID, be more on shelf. Mm because of the in-home dining experience yeah. that's become a lot bigger in mm. specifically South Africa. Yeah. And Motorcycle Marvel is, is our red blend looking into the future with varieties like Carignan, Grenache, Mauvedre, a little bit of Sinzo, so more Mediterranean varieties. Motorcycle Marvel think. comes from one of our heroes, Gunter Brusel, mm. um, uh, who was with the winery for over 35 years and he had this But it was back motorbike. in the days, like Yeah, from 19, 1958 yeah. till yeah. about 1991, 92. Yeah. Wow. Then he went to Nietlingsdorf. Mm. So he was also the first to do sweet wines yeah. and Edel Kiers. Yeah. So, but he had a motorbike that he was driving around on the farm, so that's where the motorcycle model <laughs> then comes from. And then the. Mm, this is the liquor one. Mm. We've yeah. been here for two weeks. Mm. <laughs> so, so, looking at the varieties, it's Carignan driven with Shiraz and Grenache and Mourvedre. So, it's definitely a southern French um, blend. But the way the wine speaks of raspberry fruit and fresh and fragrant style in a warm vintage like this, I think this is very impressive. Beautiful wine.
Very well made. So now we move to Heritage Heroes Anchorman. Now the Anchorman is named after a gentleman with the name of Philippus Wolfart. So was the founder of Niederberg. Mm. And just up for the Anchorman to also be Shed and Blanc being the anchor of the industry. And you would see on the back label that it's certified old vine. So there's oh, the old okay. vine sticker, mm. part of the old vine association. So Check this out. is now Amphora, it's old mm. food that was on the, uh, some cement. Yeah. Um, also a portion of whole bunch fermentation, so carbonic maceration. You have that honeysuckle, you have the fragrance, you have, it's like a, prettier wine but it's still serious and it has um, a characteristic that leads me into thinking marzipan or almond paste mm -hmm. and like a beeswaxy characteristic also in the texture because it has um, it has that liveliness of and I think that's probably the component that comes from if you say concrete or amphora that is no oak involved and you, you get that texture which is silky and rich but still it plays on your palate. It's like lively and energetic. I believe this is the right direction, especially if you start um, putting more emphasis on the vineyard and the location, the terroir, mm. that you shouldn't be overpowering and, and building a wine in the cellar as we would have done in the 1990s. Yeah. So now it's more about mm. just guiding the process and yeah. being fermentation controllers and not mm. winemakers. So this certificate saying Heritage Vineyards, and it says planted 83 to 84. This is super important uh, for South Africa, and this project is something that I support with my whole heart and my soul. <laughs> because it shows that South Africa is part of the New World, and it has always been seen as one of those countries that have been recently come into the game and playing the wine game where the old world has been around forever. But if you think of South Africa having es been established 363 years ago, like the other day, yep. <laughs> celebrated the first day of planting or, or harvesting grapes, um, this initiative is so important to show that South Africa has a lot of heritage and it has the, with this project, it's gone, gone back to realizing that not all vineyards are great because they're old, but there's a lot of really good vineyards just because they're old yep. as well. So this is something to really cherish. And I think all the uh, consumers in the world should look upon this and say, wow, they're looking after their heritage. And that's a beautiful thing. So when I was a buyer from 2004 until 2007, I created a tender saying we're looking for a noble late harvest from South Africa and this wine was the winner and we're looking at a launch in 2006. <laughs> so it's actually been around for uh, 16 years on the shelf and it is, you know, sweet wines, people think that sweet wines have so much calories but I always, when I do my master classes and tastings for people, I always say Remember what a Coca-Cola, it's got like 120 grams sh of sugar per liter. And, you know, you don't drink a liter of sweet wine. You have a glass, but you drink half a liter of Coca-Cola. <laughs> Beautiful wine. True. I'm super happy to see this is uh, still going strong. Being a Chenin base, what are the other varieties? So Chenin, Chenin Blanc, mm -hmm. Muscat Alexandri, and Muscat de Frontian would be the three major components mm. of, of mm -hmm. this wine. And if you look at the different muscats, the Frontignan is the one that is called the Blanc Appetit Grain, which is also the Van de Constance uh, That's variety right. yeah. that made South Africa famous. Famous. <laughs> with Napoleon <laughs> drinking the wine once upon a time. Huh? Yeah, that's correct. Hmm. So this is Taylor Steel. No, and then, no. no. Wow. Panacotta, panacotta fruit berries, um, yeah. uh, or, and then also some, some cheeses, especially yeah. some harder cheeses. Works quite well with some um, uh, preserve mm -hmm. and yeah, that deconstructed lemon meringue tart with this also goes really yeah. well. You've got the lemon, you've got the different mm. components. Yeah. So, but that's, and then just having it as a glass with good company. Mm. I mean, you don't necessarily mm. even have to have something with it. Mm. I can even see a Swedish apple pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. With a bit of a apricot pie yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Mm. 
All right, so I hope you enjoyed the tasting that we've put together for you. Looking at this range, for me, Nederberg has got a new face, which I'm very happy to see. Very impressed with your Cabernets. I think you have a power to be really good with Cabernet. And that, I've heard, is your focus for the future, which makes me super happy. Uh, and then very impressive to see the Carignan dominated blend uh, going fresh and energetic and still broad shouldered and doing that really well in a com combination. The Shenin, wow, the Anchorman, for me this vintage 2020 is the, I've never tasted a Shenin from your house ever at this quality. And the Noble Eight Harvest is just absolutely crazy. Uh, it's so good, and that, that price, um, I don't think you could ever find a better wine, sweet wine, at this price in any market in the world. And to know that it's 109 kroner for half a bottle, it just makes people smile. So I'm so happy that it stayed on the shelf. Yep. I feel part guilty for that, <laughs> which is amazing <laughs> as well. <laughs> but thank you so much, and uh, well done on the changes that you have shown that made a book can be up there. Thank you. Mm. Madeleine, hon testar vin med chefsvinmakaren hos KVV och jag, jag pratar om ankor hos även dig.